Today is a hard day. It's a hard day because this shouldn't have happened. We shouldn't be here. Houston's life shouldn't have ended. Not yet. He had so many years ahead and so much potential and so many people who loved him and so many people whom he loved. It doesn't even make sense, does it? And I wish I could stand here today and give us all the answers that we desperately seek. Answers to questions like, how can someone so full of life and love and who is such a source of light in the lives of so many people be here one day and then just be gone? Questions like, how could he have left us so soon? Or, why does God let terrible things like this happen to good people like Houston? To good people like us who are grieving? But the truth is, there aren't any easy answers. I know that because even in the Bible, God doesn't give easy answers. A man named Job was grieving terribly, felt like his whole world had been taken away, and he challenged God. And God didn't get angry. God didn't tell him not to ask those questions. God didn't tell him not to get angry at God. But God didn't exactly answer his questions either. And one of the things I find strangely comforting in that story is that when life is incredibly complicated and painful as it is right now, I don't have to tell myself things like, it was God's will, or God needed another angel, or other such well-intentioned but cheerful platitudes. I don't have to tell myself those things in order to be a person of faith in the face of tragedy. Faith in God doesn't mean not asking questions. And it doesn't mean accepting that this was God's will. I truly believe that God's will for all of us is to know love. The love that God has for us and the love of other people in our lives. And I know that God's love for us means that God is grieving right along with us right now. So while I can't answer the age-old question of why such terrible things can happen in a world created by a good and loving God, and while I'm not much of a theologian, I can tell you some things that I know to be true. The first one is that God's love for Houston did not stop when he died. In Psalm 139, we hear that before God knitted us together in our mother's wombs, while we were being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth, God knew us. And we are told that if we climb up to heaven, God will be there. And if we make the grave our bed, God is there also. God's love for Houston and for each of us began before there was a beginning. It began when God dreamed up this beautiful creation as we heard so wonderfully praised by our reading from Psalm 148. And one of the mysteries of this life is that the same God who made majestic mountains and rolling seas and galaxies and planets, the same God who dreamed of all these magnificent things also knows each and every one of us personally, right down to our very thoughts. God has loved Houston from the beginning of time, and that love is timeless. His death is a tragedy. But if our love for Houston is able to go on right now, even after he's died, how much more does God's love for him then go on eternally? So we're many things today. Sad, angry, Scared of a future that now looks different than it did just a few weeks ago. But one thing we don't have to be is worried about Houston. Because Houston is okay. 
He is held in the everlasting love and care of the Lord he knew as his shepherd. The second thing that I know is true is that this isn't anyone's fault. And I'm going to say that again because it's important. This isn't anyone's fault. And mostly, that assurance is probably welcome. But maybe for some of us deep inside ourselves, it's also not welcome, because if it's someone's fault, even if it's our own fault, then in a way it makes sense. There's somebody to blame. There's a reason that it happened. But I want to say to you, loudly and clearly in the name of the God of love that we worship, this isn't your fault. It isn't anyone's fault. And spending our time looking for blame isn't helping anyone. It's not going to bring Houston back. It's not going to bring us any closer to healing. If anything, it keeps us locked in a state of complicated grief that can be hard to escape. I didn't know Houston, but from what I hear from his family and his friends, he isn't the kind of person who would want us carrying around these terrible feelings of guilt or anger, and God doesn't want us carrying that either. So ask yourself, as we're here in this holy space, is there someone you need to forgive right now? Maybe it's another person, maybe it's yourself. Maybe deep down you've been angry at Houston for leaving us. All of these feelings are normal parts of grieving, so we don't need to feel bad for having them. But once we've let ourselves feel them, we need to give them over to God. Because grieving is hard enough. We have to let go of the burden of blame or of anger or of regret. Do it for yourself. Do it for Houston. And the third thing that I know is true. Houston's life is not defined by his death. And of course, we're never going to forget what a tragedy this was. But he lived a full, beautiful life. He had so many family members and friends whom he cherished, who absolutely adored him. As an actor, he made a lasting impact on the world by sharing his God-given gifts in the fine arts to bring enjoyment to so many people. You have stories to tell about your time with him, stories rich with laughter, with joy, with affection, even with sadness, and all of it, the happy times and the difficult times. They didn't just happen. Those experiences didn't end with the passing of time. They shaped you, and they're still shaping you. Houston's life wasn't perfect, as none of our lives are, but it was full, and in it and in him, we saw a glimpse of God's great love for us. So when we remember him, let's hold fast to the life he built the memories he created with those he loved, and the difference he made in the world. Today, we give Houston back to God. The reality is he's always been God's. He has been shepherded by God his whole life. He even had verses from Psalm 23, which we read earlier, inscribed on him. Houston knew God would be with him through the good and peaceful times and through the times of fear and sadness. And so, because Houston trusted God so much with his beautiful spirit, our job today is to trust God with his spirit as well. We say goodbye to Houston, giving him over to the care of his good shepherd. But we know that it's not really goodbye. It's more like a farewell, because we will see him again. The same God who knit Houston and each of us together, who knew us before time began, 
will bring us back together one day. Until then, we carry on in faith, supporting one another, and carrying Houston's memory and goodness with us to live on in this life. Amen.